Okay, okay everybody, it's me and you back together again on this lovely Friday post-market wrap-up. Yeah, September 24th, 2021. A lot of stuff to talk about. Writing all day in my little book here, my lovely little book. Um, okay, people, let's let's start off with the market. So what happened today in this lovely stock market? Well, pretty much nothing. Fractional gain for the Dow, fractional gain for the S&P 500, fractional loss for the NASDAQ. 10-year yield getting a lot of attention on the mainstream media. Well, it's about freaking time. I mean, seriously, but okay, I guess better late than never. Uh, 10 year yield 1.46 uh, dollar weaker uh, and that puts our new uh, market gauge you know the X factor sitting at about 84 it's a beautiful number in my opinion beautiful number uh, and we're going to talk more about that in just a little bit here uh, cryptocurrencies people big hit however okay you know me you know me I'm out here today, I'm, I'm making phone calls, I'm talking to people all over the place. Uh, no one I know, nobody I know, is worried about this at all. In fact, they consider it a big fat zero. Um, to me, if this whole issue with the China crackdown now, uh, making it illegal to transact in crypto, if this were really that big of a deal, understanding the volatility of the crypto space, uh, you would have seen a much, much bigger sell-off. This is nothing in my in my view. And in everybody I talk to you, and again, I talk to everybody. I talk to everybody, and I mean that. Um, so with regard to cryptos, I know my crypto lions out here, you feel the same way as me. I am certain that we are on the same page. Uh, the, it's, it's astonishing to me yet again how there are so many people who would love and want to remain in Federal Reserve issued notes. Oh, oh, no, no. God's money. Gold and silver. You see, God has money. How about God doesn't care about money? You know what God's currency is? Faith, hope, charity, love. There you go. There's the currency of the Almighty. Uh, so forget about the whole, you know, narrative of God's money. It makes me want to laugh. Ha! I think I'll laugh. Anyway, so yeah, th there we go. Uh, I can't imagine the Almighty walking into, um, you know, a store buying gold or silver or transacting in it. No, no, you see, because he transacts at a higher level. I think you get it. All right, let's leave that alone for now. Um, now, before we talk more about the 10-year yield and my magical equation, which a lot of you seem to appreciate. Some of you are asking a lot of questions, and we're going to cover those questions too. But before we get there, I want to talk about this. Now, you might, you might want to sit down, square yourself in your seat a little bit, shake off your head a little bit, take a deep breath, because I'm going to tell you something here. <laughs> Well, really, it's not going to be a surprise at all. So J.P. Morgan, you know, the super bank. Actually, this bank is another criminal organization of the highest possible order. And they get caught over and over again rigging various aspects of the market, uh, including precious metals. Now, the, this lovely organization is now paying, this is a joke, a $15.7 million fine because they were apparently caught manipulating treasury futures and options. A $15.7 million fine. That means that they probably made, I don't know, a thousand times more than that, manipulating the treasury futures and options markets. So this is priced in. You see, if you notice, J.P. Morgan stock actually went higher today despite this this kind of rigging in the market will never ever stop you see we got the sec you know oh stop doing that stop it stop it and let me tell you something about the sec the sec is on the take 
and I mean that, uh, there's no, how many of you doubt for a nanosecond that the SEC isn't getting paid off uh, by banks like JP Morgan to slap $15 million fines on uh, the biggest bank in the world by assets, 15 million, you really, are you kidding me? Oh yeah, but that's, that's where we're at. Are you surprised at all? How about, no, I don't think you are. Um, anyway, that, that's really the truth here. Now, uh, I want to talk about a couple of other things here, people. Uh, you know, actually, let's talk about this right now. We understand, at least I hope we do, um, we have an environment right now of surging inflation. It's not transitory, despite the fact that we that the, the Federal Reserve has been trying to sell this lie since its inception. No one's buying it. Uh, it's as clear as day. We have the CEOs of multiple corporations now, not just blue chips, coming out warning about higher inflation coming down the pike. Now, what else do we know is going on? The Federal Reserve, right now, as we speak, continues to run its inflation creation machine. It's issuing debt through one door, buying it back through another door, repeating and repeating and repeating, with no end in sight here. Now, I've explained to all of you from a long time ago that once you open up those floodgates of inflation and all these extra bills in whatever form they may exist begin to chase the same amount of goods, you cannot stop it. It's like a tidal wave. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm on really um, the same page as the CEOs here of these major corporations and maybe not so major ones, we are about to see a second wave of inflation that's going to make this first wave look like a walk in the park. All right, so I just want you to be ready for that. And even if, for example, okay, the Federal Reserve says just hypothetically next month, we're going to start to taper, it's not going to make any difference whatsoever. Again, the Federal Reserve is buying well, hundreds of billions of dollars in assets every single month with this mechanism, you know, issuing debt, buying debt, issuing it, buying it, you know, this, this revolving door thing. Not going to stop. It's not going to stop even if they taper. If they taper, it's not going to stop. No, it's not going to stop. So understand what I have explained to you literally since time immemorial. I have said to you all, the goal of world central banks is to inflate and inflate and then inflate some more. So even in the event of a token taper, all right, whatever it might be, that does not mean the Fed is not going to be buying hundreds of billions in assets. Moreover, funneling dollars around the world to other central banks who are buying assets with the dollars, not even their own currencies. See, you're not supposed to know that. I've covered it before. So forget about it. I'm telling you uh, that you and I are going to see a second wave of inflation, and I think it's going to be worse than the first. Um, absolutely here. A crisis. Uh, uh, I mean, look, we all know where this is going, and none of this None of this at all is, is by accident. This is central banks fulfilling their end game, shutting down global economies by any mechanism possible. They just happen to use a scamdemic to do this, using a real virus. It's a real thing, okay? Uh, we've been, we were foretold that something like this would be used. Uh, this is, uh, this is a, this has got to be the greatest, almost hideous, scheme to ever be played on the world. And again, it's the banks. It's the central banks. They're responsible for this. Who's benefiting from the crisis? Well, it's the central banks. It's big pharma with their windfall profits trying to get that vaccine in everyone that they possibly can. We have a brain dead retard as a president who's calling the people who choose not to be vaccinated. We are the enemy. We're the one that's costing everybody. How, how does that work? Okay. Uh, People that are vaccinated, are they all afraid? Are they afraid of people? 
you're terrified of people that are not vaccinated. Well, why? If you're immune, duh. Retards. All of them. All of them. Retards. Um, anyway, I'm going to compose myself here for a moment because, you know, I tend to get bent out of shape. So anyway, people, that's kind of where we stand. I want you to be ready for these things as they come down the pike. Um, definitely expect a second wave, second bigger wave, much bigger wave of inflation to hit. Okay, so make sure you're on the right side of this entire equation. Speaking of equations, okay, I have outlined for you what I think is a very, well, almost a very innovative thing. Um, I don't think anyone's done this before. Taking the uh, the ten-year yield, multiplying that by the dollar index. Oh, these are units of debt, obviously, that we're talking about on either side of the multiplication side. And then the 1.61. <laughs> it's so funny. This this 1.61 uh, is derived from another equation, okay? And it just happens to correlate with something uh, which I think a lot of you have caught on to, the golden ratio. That's just coincidence here. Or maybe it isn't. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is that 1.61 works, okay, to keep this X factor or this gauge here that we're using to measure um, risk in the market in the right spot. So the fact of the matter is it works. Uh, I have looked at this. I have back tested this. So just keep your eye on it. That's all. That 1.61, again, is being derived from another equation, which I don't even think is important. Uh, and honestly, you could probably figure it out if you just uh, had a little understanding of the market. Anyway, with that said, people, today is Friday. And I have a surprise for you you're not going to like. Uh -huh. uh, I will not be doing a markets a look ahead report this Sunday. I apologize for that. I just don't have time this Sunday to get it out. Um, if at all possible, I will try, but I don't think it's going to happen this Sunday. So you won't see me until Monday and I will miss you. There's just no doubt about that. So what I want to do right here and right now, bring it in. Nobody's looking. Nobody. It's just you and me. All right. Love each other, care about each other, and be charitable. You see, that's uh, the real currency of God, okay? Not gold and silver like a lot of you, I don't know, wackos believe. Um, anyway, I'm out of here. <laughs> See you Monday.